I have an ongoing project I pushed to the side, and I'm still growing this project, and I think some of the parts I need are going to be in here. So it's time to open some mail. Starting with integrated circuit, and it's in a cardboard box in here, I think. Yes. DS1803. These are dual digital potentiometers, I squared C controlled. Previously I used the X9C type of digital potentiometers and those had more of a control interface looking like SPI, needed more pins, but I squared C will make it at least easier to hook up and control. And I can have eight of these addressable on the one I squared C bus. So... Okay, pin 1 and 3 seems to be the two ends of the potentiometer, and it looks like this is around 100k. They come in a few standard resistances. And just double-checking outside of that foam, yeah, it's the same, 93, 94k. So I'm sure I'll have some uses for this. This is claiming to be audio cable, and it does feel like a coil of wire. I did order some shielded audio cable. I don't want to cut it, so I'm going to rip this out. Where's the entrance? Make my own. So I think this is a single conductor with a shielded ground. I actually probably want a stereo with shielded ground as well, but to get started, this will do fine. Let me just see if I can get into here. So there's the main signal wire inside and one shielded ground that surrounds this. So when I'm hooking up this audio jack board, instead of using DuPonts like this where it can pick up all kinds of noise, I can try to minimize that by using this for signal and ground, bringing that over to the other board, keeping the noise out. This says diodes and that can typically mean anything from diodes to LEDs or just something altogether different. Nope, looks like diodes. Oh, capacitors. More capacitors. Well, start with the easiest thing. Oh, they're labeled well. I don't know what the words mean. Oh, wait. So I'm guessing each one has quantity 100 and this is 104, which is 0.1 micro, 100 nano, and 103, so 10 nano, 0 0.01 micro, and 50 volts. So this is very good general purpose ratings and component values for stocking up on stuff. And of course, especially the 100 nano, I'm using those all over the place on PCBs for power supply decoupling, or in this case, it's an RC filter on the reset input of a chip. So these get eaten up easily and I just want it to restock. Are these diodes labeled? I don't know what this is. Oh wait! 5V1, 3V3. So 5 volt and 3.3 volt, I'm going to guess Zener diodes. Rather than trying to struggle looking at this up close, I'm going to look at the listings to confirm. I can't remember exactly what I wanted those for. I ordered this a long time ago. But obviously, 3.3 and 5 volts are common logic levels, so maybe I was trying to do some sort of signal clipping or clamping. For example, if I have a transducer, like this old decomposing thing I must have taken out of something, and if I want to hit it to generate input trigger signals on a microcontroller, I can use these diodes to clamp the voltage to suit whatever the voltage of the microcontroller is, so I don't send 20 or 80 volts into it. And the label on here is not descriptive, but I looked it up. It's a bunch of audio chips and such for ongoing projects. I think I ordered a bunch of things from the one seller. So, where to begin? Okay, this is labeled J201, 
n-channel jfet surface mount packet so i'm wondering if the parts are first of all genuine at all like whether or not they're a 201 as long as they're a jfet and not an npn transistor <laughs> i don't know if this will fit on those transistor testers where's my tester yeah there's pads here i may be able to test it so now i need a battery and i'll take one of these out this type of thing i might be using for things like audio switching but also just to you know experiment with in general now how am i going to do this i can't tell what i'm doing at my angle i think it's on the pads and i probably need to keep pressure on it so let's see if i can get a test i don't know if i just moved it Oh, it found something. Gate source drain and JFET. Now it's stuck to me. Some more surface mount. PT2399. That's the echo effect processor that I've been trying to get around to experimenting with. And there should be a through hole version of this as well. Maybe this is it. I already have some of these somewhere, so I don't know why I got more. Yep, these are the through holes. So. I guess what I was planning was prototype on the breadboard and then commit possibly to a small PCB if I want or use through hole still. So those would be used for audio effects. Send a signal in and have it delay and echo and create all kinds of effects. Now we have a bunch of things here that kind of look like op amps and I believe most if not all of these are obsolete so I don't know if they're actual authentic new old stock or clones or totally different parts that are just erased with the label and new labels put on mn3207 well this gets paired with another chip um, these are also kind of like analog echo or delay related effects chips bucket brigade analog delay is one of them and the other is a clock generator for it MN3102. So when these bucket brigade delay lines and the clock are put into a circuit, they do a short delay, maybe up to just over 50 milliseconds. These short echoes are good for generating reverberation or other types of modulation like chorus and flanging. So I always wanted to try bucket brigade circuits and if these chips actually work, whether they're genuine or not, hopefully I'll get to find out sometime soon. And these, I believe, would be some sort of op amps. CA3080E. That one is an operational transconductance amplifier. I haven't worked with these, but the output is represented in terms of generating current rather than voltage as the input of the op amp changes. So I thought I'll get a couple of these and look into it at some point. Maybe there's some interesting projects I can come up with. And this final one, it looks like I have more of these, LM308N. Well, again, not knowing if this is just a 741 op amp renamed, which I can try to test for. I want to try coming up with a little op amp test circuit. I can drop an op amp in and double check some of the specs against the data sheet. But if they do happen to work as expected, I thought that'd be fun to have around if I'm swapping op amps in and out of circuit, comparing how they all differ and impact the whole result. And the label on this says effect switches and looking up the tracking confirms it is what I was waiting for. So these are used in guitar effects and probably lots of other stuff. So these are momentary normally open single pull single throw so you press this and momentarily short the contacts which is what i wanted some of them are push on push off that latch in on or off mode like this where you can hear it so yeah i wanted momentary because i want this to go to a gpio input and just let me use it as a push button but in the grand scheme of all this stuff over here where these are all the relays switching all the effects like this in and out of circuit 
these are going to be all over the place and I just want to press one button and knock it over and control which ones are on or off or connected in which order on these relays press another one and do something else so I don't need this to latch on and latch off so yeah let's double check that operation yep it's doing what I want so combining that with these audio jacks, a bunch of effects, including stuff I might make myself, relay switching board and everything, these kind of parts are being used toward this bigger overall project. So if you want to see what I end up doing with all this, stay tuned. Thanks to Patreon supporters and channel supporters for helping make all of this possible as usual. Thanks for watching.